You guys, I just finished watching all four seasons of Star Trek Enterprise, and I'm pissed off! Moonfez! Hey gang, I'm JP, and welcome back to Egotastic Fun Time. I just finished watching all four seasons. I did a binge watch of Star Trek Enterprise. Now, I didn't watch them all in one day. That's insane. That's a lot of damn episodes, despite it being only four seasons of Star Trek. The original series only got three seasons, but hey, these things happen. Now, this isn't a CBS hate video or anything, or even a Les Moonves hate video. I loved Star Trek Enterprise. I watched it when it first came out 20 years ago. Um, it was weird at the time, not as weird as Star Trek could go. Uh, but at the time it was very weird to us it took uh the theme song come on so i watched it when it first aired because i'm a huge star trek fan and it was weird but i eventually ended up really enjoying the series uh, especially as the seasons went on it got to the point where at the beginning of every episode i was singing along at the top of my lungs with the theme song and my time is finally here and this video that you're watching right now is absolutely not prepared i mean i cannot express to you how little i prepared for this video i watched the series and i just wanted to talk about it because i live a lonely life as a one-man show and i you guys are my friends, so let's talk about Star Trek. Many times I've tried over the years to, to, to restart watching Enterprise, and I usually get through a couple episodes. I've seen Broken Bow, geez, probably 30 times at this point, but usually a few episodes go by, and I'm like, ugh, I don't want to get into this. While I enjoyed the sentiment of the first half of season one, at the halfway point I realized, oh my god, I'm in this. I'm excited to watch every episode, and from there on, it was an amazing experience. I just finished the fourth season. Now, of course, the, 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 the series finale, and of course the season was cut short because the moment that CBS got uh, access, got the rights to Star Trek, they decided to cancel it because they had no idea what to do with a sci-fi show. They had no idea what to do with a Supergirl show. They had to get rid of the Supergirl show. They are good at cop dramas, court dramas, CSI dramas, reboots of 80s dramas, and they obviously didn't know what to do with Star Trek when they first started making their own Star Trek just a couple years ago. But hey, I'm of uh, the opinion that people can change and they can learn from their failures, because I learned from my failures. But with Enterprise, one of the things that was always very charming about the show to me was the fact that this is the first ship. This is the first crew really going out and exploring and uh, strange new worlds and seeking out new life and new civilizations. That's what they wanted to do and they were the first to do it. This crew, the NX-01 crew, are pioneers and you see that excitement with, uh, uh, with them. You see they're excited to go to a new planet even though that new planet kicks their ass. They're excited to meet new people. Hey guys, we're from Earth, even though people hated them. Nobody cared where they were from. Uh, just get the hell out of our way, human. We got some alien stuff to do. We're wheeling and dealing, and you guys just wanna hang out and talk about shiz? No. They go to a planet, they're taking pictures. Hey, we're on a planet, you guys. And then as the seasons go on and they get more and more experience, uh, it's just weighing down on them. They're getting their ass kicked every time. Nobody's there to welcome them. And it's really starting to show. They get a little bit jaded as time goes on. They're trying to hold on to hope. A lot of episodes ended with the harsh reality of the truth of what would really have happened in that situation. Much like the Orville. The Orville doesn't always end on a happy note. It ends on a, oh man, that didn't quite work out. Let's keep on going. Now, Enterprise and the Orville are very much connected. If you watch Enterprise, a lot of the names on the screen and the opening title, the opening credits and the end credits are the same names you'll see on the opening credits and end credits of the Orville. The Orville is a true continuation of, of, of the people that worked on Enterprise. Now, of course, Seth MacFarlane was in two episodes of Enterprise, one in season three, one in season four. Serving on uh, Enterprise, serving on the Columbia. Good job. Seth MacFarlane gets around, you guys. I remember season three had that great Zindi uh, story arc, but I remember it as just being a few episodes, you know, four, five, six episodes, and then the rest of the, the season was episodic. Not true at all. The entire third season 
of Enterprise is a completely serialized story with the Zindi from episode one to the last episode of the season. But what they did really well, being that the entire thing was serialized from beginning to end, is they had a lot of episodes in between where a new adventure, the crew would come across a new adventure and they'd have to deal with that. They'd have to deal with this new race, this new situation uh, before they can get back on their serialized path to figuring out the Zindi thing. So even though they had, it was still kind of, it was like episodic, but also serialized at the same time. And then we get to season four, where the crew are now heroes, having to deal with uh, Earth, people of Earth, becoming xenophobic again, letting letting those innate uh, features that all humans have had forever and always will have uh, creep up and, and, you know, you know, come out from underneath the rocks, which is actually more relevant now than it was then in certain ways. So you see them dealing with that, um, but you also see how hardened Captain Archer became. Usually in, in most Star Trek, Captain that you had at the beginning is the same person you had at the end, except for maybe they, hey, let's play poker. Okay, oh, we should have played poker this whole time. That's pretty much the extent of how they changed. But Archer became this hopeful captain, ready to explore at the beginning of the series. And then towards the end of the series, he's battle hardened. He doesn't, he's unsure that they ever should have been let loose into the final frontier. They should have been kept back like the Vulcans wanted them to be kept back. And then you see him come over that feeling and become that hopeful, uh, wonderful, beautiful man of a captain that uh, he is remembered in history as being. A lot of people say, oh, T'Pol's a horrible Vulcan. No, T'Pol, at least the first two seasons especially, uh, uh, Jolene Blaylock for those first two seasons is one of the best Vulcans I've ever seen. But they did change her in season three and season four where she was obviously much more emotional. Now they had some reasons for that, you know, being affected by certain things that happened throughout the seasons. Uh, you know, having that little brain disease from that Vulcan mind meld. I remember somebody mentioning the ship not having a deflector dish. And I was like, oh yeah, where's the deflector dish? Now I rewatch it, I'm like, oh, the deflector dish is right there. You see it in almost every episode right in the front of the saucer. It's, it's just a el very elongated oval in between the two tongs at the front of the, of the saucer. I'm like, oh, there is a saucer. Oh, someone said May Mayweather doesn't say anything uh, after season two is finished. No, Mayweather had some crazy episodes in season three and four and was the star of a couple of episodes. Because I thought all those things were true as well. That's how I remembered it. So I'm so glad that I went back, watched this amazing Star Trek series about not only dealing with the harsh reality, of what traveling through space would be like. It wasn't romanticized like other Star Trek series would do it, uh, but also such great moral dilemmas to deal with, ethical dilemmas to deal with, just real life situations, uh, social issues that they had to deal with. So the travesty of the series is the fact that it was canceled after four seasons, at the end of the fourth season. Um, and, and you know, you could tell that they were really trying uh, to to find ways to get people to watch the show. At first, the first two seasons, they didn't even call it a Star Trek show. It was just Enterprise. Don't know why they decided to do that. They were obviously putting too much sexuality into the series, but it was obviously forced and gratuitous and just didn't fit in most places. Why is T'Pol wearing sexy little midriff silky pajamas? The theme song was just really out there, but you end up loving it. But they even changed the theme song season three and season four. It's the same song, but they put some more stuff underlying it and they made it jauntier. Like it's this little, been a long time, went from there to here. But this video is not a breakdown of Enterprise. This is me just excited about what I would just watch, the experience I just had that I relived, and I was able to re relive it with new, fresh eyes. I loved it the first time, 20 years ago, when it was out, I watched it every week but watching it again was a much more fulfilling experience. And I am just here to say, hey, you guys, watch Star Trek Enterprise. If you haven't seen it, you gotta see it. It holds up 100%, well, 95%, the effects hold up. So if you haven't seen it in a while, watch it. It's an amazing experience. We could chat about it during the live streams. And it also brings me to something that I want to do personally moving forward, is I want to talk about the things that I love 
and not just, oh, they didn't do that good enough, they didn't do this right, this new movie sucked. There's all these things that we love that we forget to talk about and we forget to commiserate about because we're distracted by new stuff when there's just a whole lifetime of other things that we've loved before and we sometimes will love them even more and remind us of what it felt like to be so excited about these TV shows, these movies, these universes that we used to imagine ourselves in throughout our lives. So that's all I wanna talk about. If you wanna help support this channel, there's links down below there to do it. And as always, I hope all your times our egotastic fun times. Get out there and let your pew pew explode, you guys. Love you. Bye bye.